Okay, we're live. <laughs> oh, look at that. We can start, apparently. That's Hi. cool. How are you doing, Claudine? Hi. So, so <laughs> nice to hang out with you again. Yeah, let me see if we can, ah, we can see both of us. Okay. Yeah, I'm in my kind of gallery view, actually, because I think, oh, there we go. Cool. So where are you right oh. now? I'm good, I'm good. Taking time to, you know, think and rethink on the life and work and yeah. what I yeah, achieve next. Yeah, it's a good, you know, good time to, um, for that, I guess we need to, you know, take the time, this weird time to do yeah. this. Yeah, I feel the same. It's been, it's, you know, I think it's been a hard time for a lot of people, but at the same time, you get this almost extra time that we don't usually have to work on things at home and connect with our family and friends. So I think that's a blessing, you know, for me personally. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm now actually like alone in the woods. So <laughs> it's kind of weird for me to have this uh, chat in the middle of nowhere today. Yeah. I haven't talked to uh, a lot of people since few days. <laughs> I don't, help me if I'm not, you know, uh, yeah, I'm not finding my words. Yeah, of course. Well, I wish I could come and stay with you, but it sounds like you've got a, a nice retreat going on. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I have a nice view here. I put myself in front of the St. Lawrence River. So I have the, it's kind of, a, let's say La Mar, it's the sea in front of me now. So it's quiet and peaceful. It's good, good for the mind when all this stress is going on and yeah, worrying yeah. about family, friends and and everybody actually. So yeah. it's good to rebalance yeah. yourself yeah yeah i've been doing pottery just to kind of connect you know it helps me That's not good. think about other things it's very focused you know on the artist on the process and then no one else is involved it's very i guess personal and um i don't know inspiring and frustrating i know <laughs> <laughs> but, but it's good it's a good time to start learning something like that and uh, you know, yeah. you have time. You don't have like just two hours in between your prep meeting and location <laughs> scout. <to> practice <laughs> something. Yeah, make That's something. Good. Yeah, I'm gonna make I you a bowl again. and then give it to you next time I see you. Okay. Oh, I love. You know, I don't know. We 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 can talk about pottery for all day because I love that. But I'm not. I'm not good at doing it. But but. I really yeah. have a lot of, them. yeah, no, little we'll cup. Nice oh, great. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. let's talk about. We want to dive in. Yeah. Yeah. We were going to talk about an overview, right? I think. Yeah. On our process, creative process on finding the look of, uh, film, a TV series, um, and we wanted to take some example with our different shows that we shot, but for the beginning we will start with this little uh, overview of what that implied, I guess, to... So first, when we, we talk about it, remember we talked about the first essential thing in this is the relation between the director and the director of photography like we have to connect together to be able after that to go through this creative process and and find this perfect look or try to achieve it because you know yeah. i was Absolutely. thinking about what i what i was about to talk today and and question again all my process <laughs> You know what it Me is. Too. And yeah. A year later, you're looking at your work and you're like, oh, okay. Oh. 
so I there might be a little bit of that today of me looking back at the decision we we took and how maybe today I would have changed things but but that's a good process too for the next mm. film and uh, so so yeah, yeah remember we said uh, when you meet a director there's a lot of uh, you need to find a way to connect. So there's a lot of coffee and sometimes a lot of wine and mm -hmm. <laughs> and hours. Yeah. We need to spend Thanks time to together. Yeah. yeah, I think it's something we don't talk about a lot, but I, I really um, enjoy getting to know the soul and the motivation and the life of my director and, and spending time with them so that when you get onto set, it's it's almost like uh, you don't need language. You you understand each other, and you have that look or that relationship. And you and it sometimes helps to have worked with them before. I find because you've got this history of. Um, but the new projects are also interesting too, and in getting to know someone for the first time. But I do, I do look to try to, you know, have this very. Um, you know, as deep a connection as as I can, because it helps so much with what, what we do. Yeah, and, and it helps when it's difficult on set, when there's a lot of stress or you have to go fast, when you know what you're doing and you understood the vision and you're on the same track, ideally, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of, yeah, it's really helpful to go also to achieve what we decided we wanted to do. So if we already understand each other, understood each other, it will help to go uh, further also, because that's the, the first steps are, are done. So then you, you, you go on set, you see the actors, like everybody, and it, it's all in front of you. And then together, if you're a good team, you can go further and try different new things that you would haven't thought about before and it's yeah. interesting also remember we, we said like there there's so much but we of course have different personalities and when you meet a, a, a director a woman a man or they have such different personalities too and visions and so you have to you said that it was interesting you have to be kind of like yeah, yeah. I think that's a lot of our work, not just with directors, but with with the whole team, is that we we kind of have to meld ourselves to support everybody in this group, you know, and I find myself trying to be a facilitator for that so that people have the space and the support and the freedom to to you know to to be themselves and express themselves the way they, you know. Just uh, in, in terms of that chameleon side, I think it's really important part of what we do. Yeah. If they're kind of in charge of the concretization, can we say that? Of the dreams? Yeah. Like the dream. to, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like the dreams are there, they're in the air, and, they're, and you have to bring everybody together technical aspect and artistic like and 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 bring it to life like in you know and tape it on the uh, on film or print it on film and uh, yeah <laughs> but but you have to be sometimes a mother sometimes a chief sometimes uh, i have to you have to fight for for your dreams or for the director's dreams also you have to bring everybody yeah together in that dream like you said so your crew and and also all the other elements that you don't always control <laughs> right yeah. yeah but keep the dream in mind that's the thing even if it's not the ideal situation or there's a major storm on set that's right yeah finding the way through the difficult times even whilst maintaining this this you know this uh creative goal for whatever situation you're in and adapting do you find yourself adapting a lot to the circumstances 
now or are usually uh... oh usually yeah I, was, I suppose maybe in the course of your career has that changed at all yeah of course but i i, I learned how to deal with it so now I'm t i think i'm better at dealing with <laughs> adaptations and oh okay yeah i don't have to do this or oh I thought I would have been able to use this tool, but it's too expensive. So let's think about another way to do it. Or we wanted to have sun and it's raining. So what can we do? Or we lost the light and it's yeah. a daytime scene and we have to keep going. So yeah, there's a lot of adaptation, of course, and you need to, to think fast. And as, as you are taking experience, you, you learn how to really like adapt and think fast. faster and faster yeah. as it it's going and as you're shooting and but it's a good challenge i really like it i start i started my career in shooting documentaries a lot uh, and traveling all around the world and you know adapting a lot to the situation you have in front of you so i think it helped me a lot to for that to adapt to people and the way they react to situations and also yeah. for my operating also it, it helped a lot to adapt to hatchers emotion what, what they were not supposed to do that but now they're doing this oh god that's interesting yeah, that's cool so let's go with the flow and yeah but you're right adaptation is a lot of uh, it's part yeah, of the I'm process. process. I'm similar to you because I, I worked a lot in a different field before I came to film in, in overseas aid, humanitarian work. I lived in a lot of different places. Which and Sorry? Wh which one? Wh what did you do before? I did like a women's and children's um, health programs, a lot with NGOs and a little bit with the UN. And I trained in that and I traveled I was fortunate to travel a lot and, and live in some different countries. And I think that helps to, and I manage teams actually. It was quite a thing of like trying to take a project and improve upon it and, and support people with what their, what their needs were locally. So I think that's probably a strength for me is bringing people together and, and, and building teams. And then having lived in these challenging circumstances sometimes with you know no electricity and water and so forth it kind of i don't know i cut my teeth maybe that's the expression that i yeah i hope you know that that there's some kind of translation of other things that you do that help you with with filmmaking i feel that way yeah. of course of course i'm sure it helped you a lot all this yeah for sure all this experience yeah. with people too because we are dealing with a lot of people on set and all different characters and yeah sometimes you have to well <laughs> breathe. Times, yeah. when it's really hot today it's really hot here i have to say it's really a surprise yeah. it's um but on set too sometimes or sometimes it's so cold and everybody's freaking out and <laughs> I yeah, have sometimes calm to, and centered. Yeah, like the Zen. Yeah. 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 But you cannot always take calm and sometimes also you have to be a bit <laughs> For sure. to, to let it out of you. But most of the time I, I try to stay a bit calm and could it it could, um, also like uh, how can we say that we can bring people in our like if we're not happy on that it's it's the same thing mostly with director if if they have a rough day they can yeah. you know what I mean uh, and the yeah food and then it's it's not going as well as it was supposed to be because because there's all this uh, yeah I guess it's we are working in small spaces usually or, or in different like tough weather outside, long hours all together. So yeah. But it's, it's fun too. <laughs>
Yeah. So, so about about meeting um, the first meeting directors and and getting along well together. I, I, I was I, I was thinking about my first when I met Lina Rosler, the director of my last feature, uh, bestsellers uh, that I shot a few months ago. We just had this, I think it was a 20 minutes meeting and, and we had to, you know, go have a coffee together and say, hi, hi, so you're from Toronto, I'm from Montreal, and maybe we will work together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always a bit very uncomfortable with this, but I brought some books, I read the script and I brought some books, art, photography book, books on old man because the principal, the, the main character of this uh, script was uh, an old hermit author um, and Michael Caine is, is uh, playing it and so I had this in mind and, and so I brought those books to her and we start talking about this and she, she made this little nice look book also on paper and she showed it to me so it was you know when you're meeting someone and you're like Okay, yeah. we're exactly okay. We're next, yeah, exactly. In 15 or 20 minutes, and um, yesterday I asked her to to uh, send me like a <laughs> digitized copy of this little lookbook. So I don't know, I can maybe share just a quick that'd be awesome, like uh, yeah, image of it to see sometimes what is the first contact you have with someone. They showed you yeah. something and what was interesting about this i'm i'm coming back to finding the look it's that yesterday when i asked her that she said remember the first meeting you brought some books and anana and and then i look at the film because they just locked it last week and we're going to go in color correction in two weeks and she said look at this lookbook we uh -huh. did it this is what it is. <laughs> i was like you're right. so satisfying isn't it when you when the, yeah. that initial vision is yeah, because I'm going to show you stuff from Sugar Daddy that's similar. We, Wendy, my director, and I had um, a lot of time looking at art references and other imagery, and and we, she hand drew all the storyboards, and we sat on a sofa together, and did that for a, a long time. I haven't managed to get those drawings, but I, I'm sh I'm pretty sure that a lot of those are in the film. I wish I could have shared them today. I'll have to be next time. That's so cool. I love that. Yeah, it was the same thing on the when we went scouting with uh, Lina and and I took so many pictures, but I'm not allowed to show them today. But I took so many pictures that we were looking at shots and 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 you know, now I know this is the movie. This is the mascot, and it, it and I can like paste them side by side together. It will be interesting for our next. Uh, we will do another one in in the year, <laughs> and so you will yeah. <laughs> you bring this story we'll Yeah, right. That'd be cool. Maybe, maybe yeah, we'll do yeah. the next project as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like okay, now we're allowed to show you that. Yeah. yeah. So, do you want to? Uh, do you want to show? Want to share? Yeah. I I will. I will try it. We'll see if it's working. It's gonna be a good test. Yeah. So, uh, and then tell me if it's working. Oh, do you yeah. see it? I can see. Yeah. Great. Awesome. So, it's just just a, an idea of okay, this is the the beginning of something, and and but she made a great lookbook on the two main characters and their environment and the way she, uh, she, was, she was seeing them. And it's kind of a road trip because they're going on the, on the road at some point. So the young woman who's from Manhattan, like a young editor going on this trip, like in bars and old motels with, uh, with this old man hermit, drunk all the time really difficult to live with and so and so from her lookbook I made those mood boards 
um, and we wanted to have this like uh, contrast between Lucy and Harris, the two characters that was already in her lookbook, the contrast of both of them, that at some point they are like uh, coming together on this trip and, and the looks are less different as we are going into, um, into the story. So I made two different mood boards for him and this like kind of a weird dirty road trip like in this upstate New York in the suburbs and in the dive bars and all this and and this wow. was more for her uh, in Manhattan clean apartment life tried to to get everything together nicely, be the best and but but at some point, yeah, we we start with this. I'm gonna yeah. come back. I have a question you? for you from Kat, yeah. actually. She's asking, do directors have a precise idea of the visual look they want for their film series? Hmm. I think it depends. Well, but as you see, it's 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 interesting to see how I cannot show you the the result of this, but this was the beginning of this discussion about how we're going to shoot it, the colors, the she had a little as you uh, were able to see a little palette colors like so I I started with this, and then as we were prepping and talking and drinking wine <laughs> and a lot of coffee <laughs> we weren't <prep. laughs> we were in prep forever on that also because they would keep pushing it because michael had a another shoot in london and it was a bit complicated to organize everything so uh we had a lot of time to think and prep and so i don't know if i answered the question yeah, I mean, I think uh, from if I'm tr if I'm looking at directors, that I feel that there's sort of different scenario, different sort of places you find yourself in as a DP. Like the TV series, is, I feel more creatives involved with setting the look of the series. You know, you have your showrunners and you have your director that's the pilot, and then maybe new directors are coming in, and I feel it's a bit of a wider group of of influence on this look and then with features perhaps it's a bit more singular with the director I don't know. but this is interesting because in Quebec most of the series but uh, every series I shot I was working with one director and I was shooting all of them and there is no showrunner here so the showrunner is the director and it's it's oh. kind of for me, it's kind of the same as shooting a feature film. It's like a long, long feature film of 10 hours. And so it's kind of a different situation about that because there's really someone who's holding the look and sending it with us like for everything. And it keeps going as we are shooting it. I, I worked a lot with Pods, Daniel Gru, and we shot a lot of TV series together, films, and, and so all this process of finding the look was sometimes started with for Disney um, 192 French version. It started with a, a music, so it was a really slow guitar music, and I was like, oh. Mm. So this is gonna be our cop show. That's yeah. cool. <laughs> That's so and beginning. because it was <laughs> the one who was there for for the the ten for man, the thirty episodes actually because we shot thirty episodes together the three seasons. So that first mm. impression stayed until the end. That's, but that's but I want quite, to a, hear quite a treat, yeah. Because from my from my end, I I think every show I've done 
has had at least maybe four or five directors. So, wow, you know, that, that chameleon side comes back in, but also there is something on your shoulders where you have to keep the thread of, of the original idea going, but within, but giving space for the director that's with you to give their own flavor to it. So, you know, I find this that's is really, like really, really interesting. Yeah. 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 That's another, cause I, I, I did a little bit of second unit and a little bit of main unit on blood and treasure series when they were shooting in Montreal. And so I worked with different directors and it was, but it wasn't, as you said, because I met them for an hour and then we had to shoot three scenes and <laughs> it was kind of, yeah. a, so we didn't have time to really know each other, but, uh, but you have to keep, and respect the look and everything that was established before when when you jumped on a project like that but it, it, it's not the same as being the dp for 10 episodes with five different directors yeah. and so usually how do you manage it um for, try for to find the time. Look? yeah i try to find time to to be you know, to know the director coming in and, and have some lunch meetings or dinner and talk about what they see, how they feel about their episode. Because, you know, the last thing you want is the director to step on and meet you for the first time on set. And uh, so I think it's, it, it's all about building relationships, I think. And then, you know, it's usually been that the first director has had a quite a few episodes before a new director comes so like you know the crew and and the visuals yeah. find themselves and then the i guess it just keeps rolling is what i've experienced and i met wendy morgan because i'm going to talk about sugar daddy later i met her on a, a, a series little dog and we worked together in newfoundland oh yeah okay yeah and we really connected we both love She's a very visual director and we love, and she does a lot of music videos and she's incredibly talented and just a very warm and generous person. So that led us to the feature we did last year in Sugar Daddy. So it's nice to kind of oh, cross the world mm -hmm. in, in some way. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. we have more questions here. Sorry. Um, it's it's cool to meet someone and, and then has the chance to work with them again in a different situation and start a project like with her you 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 really start from from scratch for your film for sugar daddy after so it's good yeah. should i yeah. share some you said of the visuals that we did because you just did yours for yours or do you want to continue oh, yeah. yeah yeah let's let's talk okay. about sugar daddy i have the pen there was a question here. While you are, I can maybe just answer. There was a question about the prep. I saw that, but do you have it? About the 10 episode, episodes prep with... Uh, Season with one director. How do you prep an entire... Yes, that's a good question, Arthur. <laughs> it's a challenge. Yeah, it's interesting also because there, there's the... We, we are keep... It's like when you shoot with different directors, you have to go on prep at lunch or you have to go, you know, during weekends. And it's kind of the same thing, I have to say, for for Disney Do It was... For 19.2, it was like... A, so there was... The first season, there was, a, I, I think, almost 200 locations. So we had... It's impossible in a month and a half because we don't have much more than that of prep to to go see everything. So I remember until the end, the, the, the last day, the last location, I think I visited the day before the last day of the shoot. So, um, and sometimes yeah. you, you take more time of prep for the first episode, like the uh, on season two, the first episode was um, was on the shooting in the school, and we decided to do a thir 13 minutes long take, a shot to open the episode. So we spent we spent almost our month of prep on this episode because <laughs> it was so huge, and then we had to 
keep going and prepping. And sometimes we have a little yatsus uh, in the middle, so we can take a, a week or two weeks mm. to keep going on the prep and start shooting again. So yeah, I'll let you uh, show your Talk nice visual. Yeah, yes. I'm just, yeah, you know, I'm gonna follow up with you as well when you're doing, it's, I, I find the same with you with prepping a, you know, a big series on your own is that you really rely on your team, your gaffer and your key grip to go ahead of you almost and be your eyes and send back information. And because a lot of the locations I find that come later, I don't necessarily have the opportunity to see them. And then uh, a recent experience for me, which I haven't had before is alternating VP on, on the, mm -hmm. the run series HBO that was such a treat for me because I could really just focus on my two episodes and I didn't have to think about you know 10 and have the time to prep with my director and production designer and first AD all together that was yeah oh good yeah just following up on that because I, I wish that you know I'd like to do more of that <laughs> we'll see <laughs> um, maybe so we'll, Daddy, we'll do one together <laughs> Maybe we can all it together. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I would love that. Um, I had some, so we actually started, and just, I guess, to talk about the process of, of looking at visuals together, Wendy and I, we started a group Pinterest because it's so nice to add things and take them away and people can kind of, all the team can also contribute. So we had a lot of, um, we had a very close knit group of creatives of awesome women, um, production designer, uh, Jesse and Wendy and myself. Oh, I think I just flipped. Sorry, that's too soon. So we started with quite a lot of art references. Wendy really um, enjoyed the portraiture of Gustav and we had some other color um, elements that we were looking at that happened towards the end of the film. And so this kind of became, it was like the initial, I guess, creative bubble where we threw everything in. And then we started to take things out, like, oh, film's a bit more in this world. And then we have this color arc, so these don't work. Um, and this, I suppose, is what you'd call a library, I suppose, yeah. And then mm -hmm. we went to trying to find this cohesive, quality to the beginning of our film um and you know this story is very much about uh, this singular musician who she's trying to um find her way with her music but she has financial issues and so she starts dating men for money that's kind of the overall premise and so as she starts to discover her music and understanding of her own sexuality and 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 she becomes I suppose it's a liberation I, I feel of this film we move into this color world so we you know we understood from the beginning that we wanted to do this transition through the film and we let me see if I can be yeah because now I don't know what people are seeing, but it's it's kind of a blurred. Um... Oh, oh, thank you, my dear. Let me see. This is weird. I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to start it again. I guess there's no point sharing a blurry screen. Do you see something now? <laughs> yeah. Yes. So um, we did that and then we printed a lot of pictures and we put them on a wall and we moved them around. It's crazy. But in our office, that's what we did a lot. And we started to oh, make these Oh, it's so cool. Pictures. I love doing this too. So it, it felt very visible. Yeah, it's, it's good to, uh, and put them in the production office so everybody, because we will talk about this later, but, but you have to get involved with all uh, production designer, costume designer, hair, makeup, and, and so it's good when you print you print them and you put them like uh, somewhere and you can all talk about it like together. Yeah. Yeah, it helps for that cross collaboration, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. 
yeah, we were all in the same place. Wendy and I shared an office, production designer was next door, and we just kind of kept going and visiting each other. And how do you feel about this? What is, you know, what's going on with this color of this curtain? Or how do, do we want these walls treated with shiny paint, which is one thing we did, because we wanted all this glary light and all these sort of flares and things. So anyway, I will, I will stop there, because I guess we would move on to, we had a bunch of elements that create the visual look. Right. Yeah. Overall. Oh, you want to keep going on the? Uh, I don't know. Yeah, how do we go? Yeah. Why not? Okay. We can talk about this. Yeah, I can. I saw there was a question also about uh, when I talked about it, it's a good. It could be a good um, way to keep going on this. There was a question from uh, from Archer about is bestsellers was a period film because the lookbook looks uh, and, and, and everything looks a bit from the 70s and the 80s I think that's what he said or is it contemporary with just a period feel and that's a very good question because that's what we try to achieve is having like books and period feeling like paper old you know mm -hmm. old paper old books like all this versus social media contemporary like style and life and and fast versus slow and <laughs> all this so and at the beginning we wanted to because it's a it's a film on on uh, books also on literature literature i will say it in french <laughs> easy um easier so so we wanted to have this feeling of, you know, objects touching them, be able to, so we wanted to shoot on film, but, and, and even on 16 millimeters to have these textures and filming social media, like computers and all this with film, with 16, to have this period look, but with like on a contemporary situation so to represent our the two characters the two main characters um she is like in her early 30s and he's 80 you know something so the, the, and they're living in totally different worlds so but we couldn't like shoot on film for different reasons so then we were like okay we want to keep this old-fashioned look even if it's not on film so let's try to test some old anamorphic lenses and see if we can get that look and maybe add at the end film grain we will see in two weeks if we we're gonna try it or yeah. <laughs> yeah i love it I, lo I love to play with it sometimes it's not mm -hmm. you have to play with all those plugins and because you can just put a texture that is you know just it, it's kind of uh, putting dirt on your image sometimes it's not working and it doesn't feel like I started natural my I had the same thing like it feels like laid on the front and not that's it because when you know what film looks like when you you know you 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 do <laughs> I'm I'm so old I did grading on screen you know you're sitting with mm -hmm. the, your colorist and you're looking at a screen and you say okay this shot should be uh, uh, darker this one this one so you know what what film looks like on a screen so sometimes when you just put a layer like you said it's... anyway so we tested a lot of old Tadeo and and I really wanted to try the the Maru anamorphics that I saw um, on uh, when they see us that Bradford Young shot it, oh, it was I, so amazing I was like good. Oh my God! Yeah, that look—that was like amazing, amazing. amazing. They—they—they they, they found the look. They found the right look for that that series. I really loved it. So I was really impressed with that. So I went to LA to test the Meru anamorphic lenses, and and we wanted because they have a strong personality we didn't want to use them for for the entire movie so we wanted to use for lucy's character more contemporary 
like lenses we even thought of maybe going spherical versus anamorphic sometimes mm -hmm. and switch okay, from one yeah. to another so, yeah. yeah but at the end we decided to we, we test many many lenses and we decide on shooting her first part of the movie on hawk v light vintage 74 who are like fake vintage anamorphics that, so they're like really they, they don't have the same personality it's really interesting but when you put them together you, they they're not because sometimes you don't want to have like two different movies in front of you when you experiment with with contrast and opposition in your look you want you want the film to be one film so you need to find the look but with different looks in it play yeah with with different i suppose brush strokes maybe yeah yeah yes. because you know we we it's so interesting i i we did this very similar process where we wanted to shoot film for sugar daddy um and we very much wanted to do a four three aspect ratio because we were very taken by some portraiture work and this is a very singular journey for this woman and that men don't really go into this frame that she exists in. I'll talk maybe talk about the four three because I could go down on a long tangent for that. But the lenses we wanted to have a lot of character and texture, and we tested. I tested um, at Keslo thanks to Stephanie. She brought some lenses up from LA, and we looked at a whole smorgasbord. And then we took those tests and we screened them at Open Post. So the director, or producers came yep. along and uh, we landed with the with um, the Super Bowl cars rehoused from TLS and they were just incredible, oh, cool. incredible lenses and I really enjoyed I would love to see those tests yeah I was trying to you know I was preparing so many different things today I have maybe I have uh, hold on I might have pictures let oh, me see I, I forgot that I have oh, those tests at home and uh, Let's yeah, test. it's like the secret stuff that for us people doing, you know, the testing is, uh, I do actually have pictures. We also tested uh, camera movement was a big thing for us. Um, yeah. So I, um, we did some Steadicam handheld tests with these different lenses outside. Let me share. Oh. And it, it made me even more excited for this four three. Um, let me try to limit. Hold on, I'm trying to not show my whole world here. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like hide view, hide toolbar. Okay, that's better. And then, you know, this was a test we did outside in winter. It's beautiful, and really beautiful. Lovely. These these were the Baltars, and that's where we ended up. I think we also so just to see wow. how the lenses behave mm -hmm. um, with movement, and we also did some interior testing with different. Some lenses had these really interesting aberrations of, yeah. of rainbows. Yes, you know. Yes. Um, and they are red with the red. <laughs> yeah, so you, you know, it was a great opportunity because it was the winter and there was lots of time just to test and look at things and look at them on a big screen it was really important to take them to urban. Um, of course, yeah. With you know? old anamorphics, I can tell you, <laughs> it's like quite a, a difference when you see them on big screen and you're like, oh, okay, okay, I see where is my, you know, little focus Area. zone and because it it, it it influenced uh, a bit our look also and you know as like we all know like anamorphics depending on which one you choose you have to frame and depending on your aspect ratio also um, you have to frame differently mm -hmm. to get something mm -hmm. in focus in your image so um, these, you had, what did you end up with? You had two sets of lenses? Yeah. So it was, um, as I said before, the 
hot V-Light Vintage 74, wonderful lenses with the uh, Maru anamorphics. And what was interesting is that uh, Stephen won't like me to say that, in, <laughs> but at Lenswork Rental, they are the ones who, who are building the lenses over there in LA. But there was something crooked in one of the lens, the 90 millimeter one, but it made like the image a bit kind of weird, but that's what we wanted. That's what Lena wanted and me too. We wanted something a bit off for him, for the character of um, Harris. So <laughs> I decided, and we didn't, when we received the lens, there was all this like, uh, we didn't, they couldn't ship it before and blah, blah, blah. So we received them and, and we were about to shoot. So I decided to embrace this aberration <laughs> to shoot with it. And it was some days I had a, because I was operating the camera, but some days I had like B camera operator. And when <laughs> I was like, put the 90 on and they were like, what's happening? That's normal. That's normal. It's kind of crooked. You have to play with it. But we had a lot of fun, like using this kind of artistic personality yeah. of the 90 millimeters. Yeah. That's so cool. Don't fix that's, what is going to help you. That's the process. Yeah, and that's it. That's kind of the the process. Mm -hmm. And and. You, you you use your tools like differently when when because because i'm sure like on another film i would have received that, that lens and i would have said oh my god i can't use it yeah. this is not i can't but on that film that was exactly what we wanted to <laughs> we were looking for that so exactly yeah mm -hmm. i, I find fun. i I, yeah, well, my series run was the first time I had sort of a, a different family of lenses. You know, we we shot DXL2. We had some Primo artists that were very characterful and had beautiful flares, but very soft around the edges. And then, you know, we had some other sharper lenses. And you kind of have to get to know the character of all of these lenses for the times that you want to use them. And, um, you know, I jumped on, it was just a two week process of filming. So you got to kind of, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. be and no, no defenses. Yeah, they are, they are your children. <laughs> oh, this one will, you know, <laughs> this one has this personality and I will use it anyway. Yeah, yeah. you have to know them by heart. Mm. That's true. Yeah. Same thing for, and sometimes, like, you need also the, your lenses to be really, like, perf uh, in a technical uh, perfection. Um, uh, sorry, I'm, I will rephrase this for, as an example. When I went to shoot up north uh, of Quebec in Fermont for La Faille, and it was minus 40, we wanted to go there with lenses that could you know, uh, be safe for us in that kind of situation. It was so cold. So we tested a lot of lens and lenses and at the beginning we wanted this gritty look, but we decided not to go there with old Panavision that we tested that, that we liked, but, but we, we decided at some point to go with the Master Primes, the uh, Arizais Master Primes, because they were, are indestructible. They they were yeah. really so resistant. Yeah. And because you can you know you can open you can shoot wide open at one point four with them, they're incredible. Also, they can become really soft and nice for close ups and and in the and then we had a lot of course of drone shots to do in this like landscape white winter landscapes and match those shots with our shots from the ground. So the master primes also were, were good because they, they're sharp and they, so we didn't have problem um, of matching them also with the drone shots. And so this could be also, uh, yes, another 
consideration. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I, I, I have, I have, you I'm know, sorry. honestly, I, you. I really like, you know, your your English is amazing. My my Quebecois is crap. No, no, that's okay. You know, yeah, everybody Maybe will recognize this nice like Quebecois accent. <laughs> Do you do you ever um, choose lenses based on on like functionality in terms of having the same diameter on the front or their weight or, or how much they open up to? Do you start there or you I, start with? Book? Yes, one of one of my favorites for a long time were the Cook S4 because of their incredible uh, minimum focus and. So I I was I didn't mind to when I shot a lot of uh, I shot a lot of series with them I didn't mind to have a little bit more weight on my shoulder because I was able to go close like more more than often like with them so I wasn't afraid to uh, and and they have this nice softness too, too that I really like so but sometimes for Sometimes you have to cut a bit on the weight for, like I shot this feature film, uh, Une Minute 54, One Minute 54, and we shot in a school, uh, a high school that was open with all the students in it. <laughs> that was kind of, it was oh, shooting wow. fiction in a kind of a documentary like setup. So we were That's putting amazing. our I did the same thing on backstage. I just have to tell you, I did the live school on, on backstage oh, series cool. I a while ago. But it was like, yeah, there were bells and you know. Amazing so, to be able yeah. to do that. You throw your actor in the middle of, of the cafeteria with like a hundred of students eating their sandwiches, talking, and the director. It was so cool and good with 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 um teenagers he was like he's an actor too young england so he was telling them okay don't look at us look at them <laughs> but 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 just when he will throw the, the sandwich on his head <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so i needed to have this kind of a documentary like package camera package to be able to fit everywhere in the school in the morning we had this little window of between seven and seven thirty, with where all the buses arrived, and yeah. and we needed to shoot scenes there. So, <laughs> so we we throw the actor in the bus, and they were coming out <laughs> with 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 all the other students, and sometimes we started a scene with ten extras, like natural extras, and and at the end there was. <laughs> 300 of them around us Crazy. <laughs> but it was so fun anyway i chose the, the i chose the ultra prime um yeah. for this film because of that yeah. also yeah for sure yeah. those are lovely too i've used a lot of cook s4 as well it's something i love the color oh, yeah. too, the softness and the, yeah yeah i think i shot most of my TV series with the Cook as Cat, and mm -hmm. some of my uh, favorite feature films too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I think we have some questions that we've been ignoring because we just love chatting too much. Francine <laughs> <laughs> um, asks, uh, "What is the best way to communicate between director and DP? How important is it that directors know lenses?" About lenses, I'm, I missed so the, the last part. Uh, the question from Francine is, what is the best way to communicate between a director and a DP? And how important is it that directors know lenses? Oh, this is really different from a director to another because some of them are really technique, really technical. And yeah. some of them are not. And so some of them know really well the lens they are like, they can call 25 whatever um, to you and others are like you choose and we're gonna talk about the shot together on the monitor and so but but in prep we when we are doing tests I don't know about you and but we, you talk about that when we're looking at it on screen with the director we can talk about 
lenses and see uh, w with example if they're not really technical. So I don't think, I have to say that because I made, and you too also, uh, you did a lot of first film. So yeah, don't be shy if you don't know the difference between, you know, 25, 30, 250, we're there for that. If, if you know, we can take care of, if you can um, communicate Absolutely. the vision. Huh? Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, no, sorry, keep going. I totally interrupted you. No, 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 no. I, I'm done. I, I was, I'm trying to uh, do too much gesture here. <laughs> I think I'm trying to calm down. Yeah. Yeah, oh, I, 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 I have to. Oh, calm down. <laughs> anyway. I'm going to so, show you something because we, because we did talk about first time directors who tend to, you, who um, maybe haven't got as much like um, history with lenses. And I really love the director's viewfinder for features. Yeah. That may go away with COVID, unfortunately. Good well, point. I'll, but I feel like the director's viewfinder um, gives you a sense of the lens really in its in its full beauty. And I'm a huge fan. And yeah, so I'm going to share with you me and Wendy working together because sharing is so fun. Because oh, I like our tip. Our is is really good for but but to have a viewfinder and lens, yeah, that's cool. There's it's Wendy, for me. you know, in a shot, and then, you know, and then me. So we would share this a lot. Right? Oh, of course. Slip between yeah. That kind of, and this sort of talking about it. Do we want to go tighter, shorter, closer? And we would get to know lenses together that way. That's it. That's the way to do it. But from, from, from my point of view, definitely. And, and, and you won't get the same when you're with your phone, you won't get the right feeling of the lenses you chose before and, and, and see on set with, with people, with objects, with set design, with everything, what it looks like. And also depth, because this is really important too, like to see what do you want in focus and you don't want in focus. And so that's the kind of also like talk you can have together with the lenses in your hand. Yeah, I totally agree on that. So, uh, so yeah, you can discover which one you, that you like uh, while you are shooting, if you don't know them. Anyway. Yeah, that's it. And sometimes, because I, I work with directors who know like all lenses very well and all that. and. and <laughs> Pods as an example, like sometimes he was like, I hate the 25. So <laughs> for that show, <laughs> we won't use the 25, leave it in the case. <laughs> but sometimes you're, you're stuck in a corner and, and you need, yeah. and you try to <laughs> put the 25 on. <laughs> and exactly. he always noticed it. He's like, oh God, how did you do that? <laughs> you put the 25, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> I think uh, you know, anyway. I sometimes try, I, if a director is really, you know, uh, has a certain thing they don't like to do. I had a director that really hated POV shots. I would say, okay, just let me just show you something. And then they can decide if they want to use it or not. But just showing is, I think, yeah. such a great way to have a conversation about an image than describing it. Because the describing... Yes, yeah, so doesn't really like work. a little movement to. Yeah, you're like, but I, I will show you the movement, and if you don't like it, we will stay still at the end of the tracks, or so. Just maybe let's try it and see. Yeah, it's good to see, and you can always do different versions of of your takes, also if you have time. That's right. I say that like that when we have time. Do you do you want me uh, to talk about Le Mans? Uh, that would be awesome. I really enjoyed. I really liked looking at your imagery yesterday of Le Mans. So I think people would would get a lot out of that. But are you done with Sugar Daddy? Did you have I'll, more? I'll come more back to it. Like, I have more images, but oh, should I finish and then we go to Le Mans? I, I'm really easy. What do you prefer? Me too. I am. So okay, I'll let you. you go. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay. 
it's um um because it's an interesting uh okay <laughs> i'll try to because for this story it's a story it, it was a really uh strong um real uh story from a book but from a real person who wrote the book uh, on domestic violence so, um, and the way the book was written and the way the script were written too, we were going back and forth on time so much that we were afraid that the audience will get lost at some point. So, and it was a short period of time, the story. It's, it's a young couple and, and they spent maybe three or four years together. So from their from 18 years old to 22 years old. So there's no aging to understand, you know, aging, makeup aging to understand that, oh, we are uh, going further in, in time or uh, this is a flashback. So we had to find a way to um, get audience keep keeping track on the story. So I, I tried something and, um, so, so with the director and, and all uh, at, at the artistic department, we divided and, and the, the first 82, the 80s were really on that too. We divided the, the real chronology in four acts, four period of time. And, and I will um, resume or, or vulgarize it like the first one is love, like um, falling in love. Who was the and I will show the mood board to start with. Um, so this this was the inspiration for the first act. So I'll, I'll go really like basic. So let's say falling in love, and then faded red was the next step of, okay, you feel that there is something wrong. You know that you shouldn't, shouldn't stay in this relationship. You have to move, but you can't, but you're still in love. There's still a lot of hope and all that. So it's kind of fading. And then when you are really into it and you cannot get out of it for many, many reasons, and it's so violent and there's a lot of psychological manipulations and you're going down and down it started to getting really green and but i kept uh you'll see in the other references after the 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 real stills from the show i always kept the reds and the green together in the image for those three first acts but but it's it's merging the red is merging into the green but it's still there and the present time when you get out of there or you try to get out of there because it's a long process we wanted to to be clear for the audience that okay this is she's out of there this is the present time so we decided to go on blue okay hmm. i had I have to say now that the blue period was the most difficult for me to uh, achieve. And because when they edit, edited everything, they cut everything together and it was like, <laughs> you're like, oh my God, what did I do? Sorry. <laughs> Cause, cause, uh, sorry. It was kind of um, difficult to, to um, there was a lot of consistency uh, in in what we uh, we uh, achieved on that, but there was difficult in uh, in color grading sessions to ma to to merge or to to have the blue scenes like uh, cutting nicely with the others. When I did my update, um, my uh, website update a few weeks ago, and I put all the stills in chronology, I was like. Oh, because oh. it I'm so into it. Yeah, and everybody also like. And <clears throat> they were in the scene. There was a little bit of hope. I was like, okay, we need red in this in the corner. So if it's not on our clothes, it's under the lights. Or and when it was going down, okay, reverse. So there was always a ratio of red and green in every image. So I will go on, on this and show you. So all this. Mm -hmm. 
I wanted to try it again on another film when it will be. Um, uh, I, I want to try it again when it will be necessary or a good way of shooting another story, but do it in chronology. So start a, a movie red and finish it green, but but without like a, it's not in your face that what's going yeah, on, yeah. but but because when I put it in yeah. Anyway, so it's interesting, well, Claudine. Okay, I'll show you later. That, that we try to attempt that with Sugar Daddy, where we started with very little color, and it was quite blue. Are you serious? Too red at the end, and I, I was trying to make it seamless, you know, so you don't really feel it being like a heavy hand of the filmmaker. It's part of her inner journey that color comes into her life. But look, I, I'm the same as you. I looked at the sort of the chronology of the imagery and sometimes we didn't always like adhere to that. So I suppose that's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, oh, but, wow. but it's interesting. Cool. It's part of the creative process. So that was my, and to question it, sorry, I didn't finish my answer. So it's part of the creative process to question what we've done before. and. So that was my mood board. And then we, we did some tests with the, the fantasticals, Marie Peru was our actress, the main character on that. So uh, there's a little bit of information if you want to. Uh, so I was testing different gels, color, asteras, uh, everything on her to see. Um, and I wanted Jean Babin was the production designer to put a lot of colors like, so when we were in this red uh, act uh, to put some red on the curtains, on the walls. And I also asked him, you see here, bounce rouge, so red bounce to, to give me, uh, to give me, sorry, um, like foam core with the, the colors of the walls. So I used it a lot to bounce, you can see on her, so bounce the light for my close up oh. on uh, bounce. Yeah, that's, that's where the colors of the environment and the principal colors of the act we were in. <laughs> Am I clear? That's, I, I'm not that's sure. cool, I'm just stealing that one. That's really great. That's I, I'm I'm in love with this now. It's it's so great. It's it's really and you know when you shoot a wide shot and then you go close and the wall doesn't do its magic anymore. So you just bring your bounce in and it's amazing on the skin because it's so natural. It's not so. This is a real stills, uh, color corrected and all this from the shows. So this is all in the first act. They're in love. And and they're going, oh, there was this also, uh, and I don't know how we did that, but we did it. We went to shoot in Tunisia because <laughs> there was a lot of uh, scenes over there and we were not sure <laughs> we, were, we would have the money at some point, but, but we did oh. it. <laughs> so at the end of the show, so I took some, this, the, those images are from, um, they were inspiration for me for a, document, a documentary I shot in Algeria many years ago. So I showed them to Patrice Sauvé, who was our uh, talented director on that series. And w the first time we met, we were talking <laughs> about uh, meeting director, the first time Patrice and I met, I think we had this, we were supposed to have a coffee, but we talked for four hours. <laughs> it was a very, very long coffee. Okay. And we yeah. talked about Algeria and sh I showed him like pictures. This is really a bad quality still that I took from, from, the, from the documentary online, but, but you can see that feeling. I wanted to reproduce it, but in, more in our like keeping our look but but in the same vibe that i um have experimented myself over there but then when it's fading a little bit uh, hmm. so the faded red look i'm gonna show you also costume because they did a great work 
so I wanted to go on orange, pink, like, and, and adding more green in the, the environment. So her bedroom at her parents' house, where she always come back when she thinks she will get out of the her relationship and she keeps going back. But, but this room had a lot of personality from her princess childhood and all this. But but you can oh, yeah. see that it, it's more arranged getting it's because we put pink curtains and all this in it, but I kind of tweak the colors of it to uh, to have this faded red coming in everywhere. And this green is taking more places now in in their couple. <laughs> this is a kind of a little degradé <clears throat> sorry <laughs> we were playing with with the uh, Jose Castonghi, our very uh, talented custom designer too. So, and there was a lot of uh, curtains and uh, that I ask uh, again to set and, and that we in, included in set design to help me getting the looks, but in a natural way, I didn't want to put gels on every lights around. Mm -hmm. I wanted it. I wanted to feel natural. This is in Tunisia, again, but a real feeling. And I, at the beginning, I was looking at, you know, you start from red, and and then you're going to those brownish kind of old pink, yeah, red. Oh, Cl Claudine, yeah. already, has, already oh, has a question yeah. for you. He's saying when you went through different colors, did you combine different amounts of diffusion uh, brackets filters with each color? For example, large amount of diffusion with red, small amount of diffusion with blue. Uh, not really. No. Yeah. It was um, more a question of feeling and mixing them. I, I will show you. I made a lot of tests for for the green look also, the way I wanted to mix, it, it's a kind of a, it's a, to find a good ratio, the good contrast colors ratio you want. So I, I didn't want her to be like all green, uh, mm -hmm. like her skin tone all the time at the beginning. So I wanted to have, and, and same thing for the parents and all that, because it wasn't just the two of them, the young, beautiful uh, uh, couple, it was also like their parents and all the others that that they had to be in this environment too. That was, that was a bit difficult, but uh, I wanted to keep always like something that is warmer on them. So those are the the parents and I, I didn't want them to be in too much green because it was kind of weird. So uh, I didn't use specific uh, filters for my different colors. It was really a question of finding the, the good balance uh, in the contrast of the colors. And, and as we were going, I was putting more and more blues in my green look to to bring us to the next one. Um, so how those did are you some track, uh, sorry Claudine, how did you keep track of the different adding of color or taking it away? It was a lot of uh, I'm I had to be really organized and 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 also the first CD and the second maybe were awesome. They put like the the the, um, the look the the act on the call sheet too, so everybody knew. Okay, this scene is on Act Two, or this one is Act Three. So everybody knew about it, and we also organized the schedule in a way that when we shot in the parents' house, we shot the first uh, week uh, that was in the first act, so the warm house with a lot of wood and yellow curtains and all uh, all this. And then we went back in this house at the end of the shoot and we changed, um, uh, our department changed the, co the colors 
of the walls, but it was really subtle. We, we put everything colder, so the, wow. the curtains were blue, the, the, and, but you don't really, see, you don't see it automatically. It, it's, it's all subtle, it's in the sets, it's in the, uh, in the, the physical space. So this, this was just um, an example to show us because we can talk about this later, but because um, I really like the red because I can play uh, inside my camera on the colors and do my live grading right in the camera. And I'm always doing it for my rushes, like directly in the camera while I'm lighting. And, and usually I'm not, going as far this is the the final uh this is the final field and this is from the rushes so it's just to to see like how i can achieve when i have specific looks like that like i can really go further with my look and and be sure that i'm on the the right pages so this is from So we, it, we, it, talked a bit about, we talked about the color process a little bit before this um, session and you very much um, hinted at playing with the settings in, in your camera as sort of a way to um, create your looks on set. So my, I guess I'm curious, do you start with a base LUT and then manipulate on yourself on set? Do you have a color? Do you have a DIT on set? Like, what's your process for all of that? So, I usually don't have the money to have a DIT on set. And so, from many, many years, um, I'm operating my camera, I'm doing my, my grading for rushes live on set. Uh, in my camera so usually what I'm doing is when I'm doing my tests I'm playing with my looks in the camera and I'm taking notes of what I've done for each different look so sometimes my my ACs they have a little notebook and they note like my settings so I can yeah. and sometimes I just after a few days I just remember them so I switch everything and but they keep they are keeping tracks and looking at what I'm doing. Sometimes yes, no. Sometimes I'm I'm changing my settings without telling them, and they're like, "Oh my God, you're you're red." Or uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I did it. It went two takes. Yeah. <laughs> I did one. Well. Really <laughs> so I can really so, relate yes. to that. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's I really like it because also I'm operating. I have you know I I'm in my camera and and while I'm let's say rehearsing or I can see oh yeah there's a this little uh, A's of blue that I don't like so I go in the camera punch it and just get rid of it and it's and when I look at rushes usually they're not they're not exactly what I want but they're they're as close as I oh, want so yeah it's, it's another way of um, I'm not using a lot a lot because also I'm working I started to do this with red cameras since the red one. So, and I, I'm, I'm keep, and, and, and I have difficulties to not doing it. So to get used to another method because I'm so much into it. And now with the new uh, workflow, the new IPP2 workflow, I can go even further in post. They can, it's, it's, yeah. it's almost there. They, they can take all my, because first, before we were using the offline as a reference and my still from, uh, from the rushes as references and we start from scratch. But now they can also use, they're supposed to be able on my next time to use all this uh, as a, our base. So it's kind of the same thing as using a lot, but it's uh, embedded in the, but not really because you can always get rid of it if you don't like it because sometimes I'm like okay um, I changed my mind this is not exactly what I want or I went too far on this or I didn't have time yeah. to change it but you are working in a different way 
I mean, I've had, I've, I've been in similar scenarios for you where there's been no dip and I then probably work from a base lot and then I adjust as I go as well as you and may perhaps, I mean, I think overall my goal is always to get to the closest finished look of the film on set as I can so that anything in post is sort of already there and now we're just adjusting because I think that's important in terms of editorial and people get very used to I mean other DPs say the same but I'm just repeating <laughs> but um, yes I, I, I think it's great when the whole creative important. team you know the whole yeah, like the whole creative team sees the final look as close as it can be to what it's going to be. And then... And you can adjust on set. Sorry? Sorry. Sorry, the other okay. departments, when they see the, 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 yeah. the look on set, they can adjust also for it's, colors you know, it's, or even the exactly. color. You can, you, can, you can go down this rabbit hole of, you know, why is that why is that curtain looking purple now when when it's in, in real life it's brown so you can have those conversations with the introduction of LUT and color um i think when all the creatives can see it and uh, work within that world i suppose that would be why i wouldn't just sort of not create a distinctive look and just shoot it i guess middle range is maybe what you would say and then deal with it in post. So I'm similar to you that mm -hmm. way. But I do maybe my shows have had more dips and more I've had some live grading. I've had no dip, no grading. I've had a combination of all those scenarios. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do love the interaction on Sugar Daddy that I had with Andrew Sulky. We we looked at things together uh, we could change and tweak and change lots not that we did that that much I, I i have sort of a cool bunch of lots i love to work with because they have like an, a film emulation built in and i i developed them with some colorists like a technicolor and so i know i feel like i know my lot like a film stock and, mm -hmm. and I go but that's what it is yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of the same. Mm -hmm. it's, oh, it's sorry. Kind of the same. Oh, but it's the same minding of shooting on film using LUTs as like the film, film stock. Uh, same thing for me. Like when I'm playing in the camera, it's like different film stock. Okay, I'm like for example in Le Mans, I had my settings for the red, so it's kind of a lot. Also, it's the same um, mentality of when we were shooting on film, we were trying different uh, yeah. filters and temperature, color temperature, and uh, and whatever and so I'm, I'm used to do this and I, I'm still doing it in my photography. So it's kind of a, okay, for this environment or this kind of lighting, I'm going to use this film stock or this LUT or this setting yeah. and et cetera. Yeah. And, but, but I think it's really important to show also the art department costume makeup. What are these before starting to shoot? When we are doing those tests with all uh, artistic and creative department, it's important that they see, like you said before, all it reacts on colors. Like if, um, for example, in in this Nevdu, we decided to go on a look really desaturated. So, but I didn't want to put extra colors on the skin tone. So we we experiment this a lot with Marlene Rouleau was the the makeup artists on this to oh. to have them define the, the the good like color makeup for every character so they after that they don't look like totally gray um so, so it's all different things that and you don't have to put because i ate that when you put orange <laughs> like yeah, you, orange, you yeah. tweak and you feel it so 
so it's important when you do your tests. I love doing tests with production designer and, and tested colors for walls, for, you know, environment. Like I said, and use them also in my lighting. I love testing lamps to see what they're doing. We, for La Fai, we, we had to um, design from scratch in this empty shopping mall, our police station. So it was fun uh, to decide on what lights and test them before we will put on every desk and what will be on top of, uh, of um, in the ceiling because there was nothing there. So we designed with Jean Babin again, it was him again. That year I spent my year with the same director, Patrice Sauvé, to shoot La Faye and mm -hmm. Le Mans and Jean Babin, the production designer. So we were, <laughs> at the end, we were a good team. So nice. no, at, the beginning, at the beginning too, because I worked with Jean many times before. So Jean made some, some uh, lights for us and we put Asteras in them and, and changed the, the police station in a really in mini studio and we can operate it, everything from my gaffer, Hugo Roy, high pad, and it was really fun. So to, to experiment and, and to have everybody see how it influenced their look to their costumes, their like, yeah. when you apply your luck, it's really important, I think. I think, yeah, because they need to the see that visually, how it's affecting the color choices they're making. Um, maybe there isn't like, I feel that there needs to be more conversation generally probably about those things like cross department. We were lucky on Sugar Daddy that we all lived in this, I don't know, cauldron of sharing. I loved it. Because mm. we really took the whole oh, me too. process through, you know. Actually, I mean, we've got half an hour left, Claudine, because we just love to chat. Um, can I share a My few stills from you? Go yeah. ahead, yeah. Yeah. So um, probably we'll, some, some color stuff will come up. I'm doing this very ghetto. I don't know. I'm just, you'll, you'll see this side. But uh, well, maybe I can wow. do that. Uh, is is this the shot from the film? So these are still it's from amazing. the film. Thank you. Wow, where I'm is this? In, this was in, on Leslie Spit. Um, and this is the beginning of our film and uh, utilizing a lot of 4-3, which is lovely. I really enjoy this aspect ratio. I've shot a lot of like, you know, 16-9 television generally and then 2-4-0, but I really, this is my first time filming 4-3 and I really enjoyed it. Let's see if I can click along. Um, and this is you're, Kelly, our you're image, Darren. Can you see it? Your images, is, it's, it's very small. I don't know if uh, Oh, okay, everybody thanks. Sees. Let me try doing something different. Is it bigger ah, now? better. Yeah. Okay, yep. great. Better. I love it that you're my beautiful. eyes. <laughs> yeah. We want to see so we, they're beautiful. Can you see this one now? Yes, yeah. very well. Okay, perfect. I will then I'll, I'll keep going. Um, and we started with a funeral and singing and she's a musician and you know as gradually as the movie progresses she finds her voice and her, her artistry really comes through and she has along this journey relationships with interesting uh, males who she goes on dates with so it's kind of a, the premise of it and um, I suppose we really had a, we had a lot of locations. We uh, these were the limitations. We had very few shoot days. I think it was fifteen, maybe sixteen. Uh, budget was a, was low, like around a million. Um, and so this team came together to try to find a way to make this film in the days that we had, but give it all the love we could possibly put into it. Um, actually, I want to show, I'll show some crew pictures at the end. Yeah, because it's a great team. Um, <laughs> there is, um, you know, this is where the dates start, kind of hostile. 
very um, <laughs> linear. You know, I really um, love framing for so many ways you can convey where a character is at in, in the story. Um, to more personal in her room. And the way that we framed her, we tried in the beginning to not have, for everything to be very her perspective. And you, you, you know, we actually throughout the whole film pretty much took out over the shoulders, which I thought was an interesting uh, way to go. This room was originally white. And I love that Jesse and I, we talked, and, and Wendy, we talked about how we wanted the lights to reflect off the walls. So we chose a very glossy, reflective, dark blue. And we wanted the room to be small and we purposely chose a very claustrophobic room. And you feel it, I think, in the, in, in the room when she's creating her music. And it was more difficult to shoot in, but it had that quality we were looking for. Um, then she goes into these sort of altered states where she's creating music and she takes on androgynous characters mostly um, and plays with her gender, her sexuality, her music. It's kind of her create, you know, like her world of creation. And so I did some, we did some other effects here with Vaseline on lenses and certain types of lighting and certain reflective surfaces. Um, when we pull out of the music, she goes on more dates with weird and wonderful men. Um, and this is where color starts to come in a bit more. Um, and I really like the sequence that we did here. Um, mm -hmm. back, you know, back in her apartment, she has this relationship that with her best friend that kind of goes south, you know, sour, salty, maybe is what I would use. So it has more intimacy perhaps in the framing um and the colors are more neutral but we're kind of gradually working our way towards more more uh more saturation perhaps and reflectivity we used a lot of mirrors and um, um natural devices that are actually not you know we probably had like a sky panel and some m18s and that's kind of the world that we're working with <laughs> Um, we did a lovely sequence for the projector. That was really fun, you know. You can actually light a whole scene with a projector, I didn't realize. Um, <laughs> you see, it's nice. Anyway, this is, I think this one was before color correction. So we did take out, I think, a bit of green. So so here we, she's starting to find, find her, you know, she's, she's questioning a lot in her life and and this is the warmth coming in and um i quite love that and then more dates so the dates get even more kind of bizarre i, I thought this was quite fun we did the whole car rig where she escapes the car and sits on the top of the car and does this <laughs> elaborate you know dress and and rings and I, it was really fun wow yeah so there is the Ooh the wider shot of this car sequence that we did. Um, and I can't explain to you why this car is on an angle. It was Wendy and I and everybody just thought it would be interesting. So we went, much to the producer's annoyance. Um, and here you start to see a bit more color coming in and, and uh, saturation. And now we're, you know, amping things up. There's bar stuff. Again, the, the four three is really really enjoyable. You can you have a lot more headroom. Um, you know, we have a question on that on the on the aspect yeah. of ratio right now. So, why would you choose a certain aspect ratio? And some directors, and some directors like to reframe crop in post. <laughs> mm. <laughs> <laughs> what oh. are you thinking of that? <laughs> Um, I, I come back to um, a professor I, I love from, who's wonderful, called Bill Dill, and he said, there isn't, or I'm going to quote him probably badly, he said, there is no as there's no rule on aspect ratio. You, you're choosing your aspect for the story, just because 
it's the normal right now doesn't mean everything should be shot in the same aspect ratio. You, I think I pick for, I, I, land, I don't try to go to a natural aspect ratio. I have a conversation with the director. Well, what do you do? Well, sorry, I was reading all the other questions. Oh, okay. There's the main. Oh, okay. Okay. There's lots of them. All right. Well, why didn't I just I I go. keep going? I'll finish on the sugar daddy because we've only got, oh yeah, we're good on time. Um, but to choose this aspect ratio, it came from the, the visuals that we looked at in prep and the portraiture. And we looked at lots of painters and artists and we wanted her journey to be very singular and to be with her. So that's kind of informed the full three. And it wasn't necessarily an easy process because they wanted for, let's say, deliverables, they wanted a, a, a 16 nine as well. So we shot both, which, you know, honestly, I prefer just to shoot one, but we had to do the two. So things had to be out of the 16 nine. But the good news is people loved it so much it stayed in full three. When you're talking about aspect ratio, when you chose, let's say, to go cinemascope and, and, and then it ends up like whoop, they're, they're cropping the side to fit some purposes for the, the distribution. So it's always sad. It's the same thing for four tree. If they poof, they crop the bottom and the... And, and the top, it's kind of sad for a nice framing like this one, for example. It, it could, you cannot reframe this. This is framed for the ratio. That's that right. You shot. Yeah. I, I like anyway. that we were we were locking ourselves into decisions together and not deciding on those things necessarily like philosoph philosophically after the fact. Um, yeah. So I, I think it's really important to have all those talks before shooting and really like uh, being involved in them. It's the same thing for colors because if every department is going on a look, if it's all red, like uh, for like the one I showed you for Le Mans, you cannot yeah. decide at the end. Okay, like some people say in color correction, you can do anything, but that's not true. You will always feel something is wrong when you turn it to blue if it was supposed to be red, or when it's framed for 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 a tree and it ends up sixteen by nine. There's something wrong, and it's weird because about cropping in post, every time Vicky Lenoir, my my good friend colorist, uh, who I'm working with a lot for different projects since uh, two years uh, would say you always notice when they they, they they did something with your framing and it's true like I, I'm looking at the, an image and I'm like what's happening this is not the way I shot it and she's like how can you <laughs> you you see it but it's you see there is something wrong it's 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 not I think, shot I think for you feel it like I feel things that are off and I can't necessarily explain why, but I, I know that they're off. Yes, exactly. Yeah, like something has been changed or altered, like the headroom or the way where the eyes are or what the intention was. Um, mm. You know, we... Because framing oh, is such an... Oh. Yeah, let me talk a little about... This is a really interesting scene. I want to talk about this one. This is the, the, the wake up, the morning after sex wake up that, that some of us have experienced. And there's um, the prior scene is the, the romance, you know, where you have this feeling and we lit it with a very sunset feel um, or late, late, after, late evening. And um, I'm missing the scene in between, actually, which you'll see in the movie when it comes out. But then we go to, and this is a lot of certain types of lensing and, and um, intimacy. And then we go to the, the wake up in the morning. And I, I, we actually shot okay. this whole, we shot this whole sequence with just a 16 millimeter and then 150 on, her, like a 50 mil on her. So you feel, 
uh, this in, this isolation of her in this big space. Mm -hmm. You know, he's ignoring her. She's waking up. She's discovering that he is no longer the man he was the night before. And it's her. I tried as much to make this like her feeling of what that is visually, which is very much. And then this is the 50. I, actually, not the best screen grab. And, you know, this this sequence um, took a lot of different people to come together. The furnishings and the way it's framed and the color and the, and actually even I can go back to the, the, the film reference of this whole sequence. Oh wait, do I have the? So I have, um, someone is texting us that we still have 10 minutes to go, so. Oh, okay, so I'll you know. Rambling. Yeah, okay, so I'll finish. And then uh, we finished towards the end of the movie with the color, the light. Um, she takes her own apartment and, you know, um, rediscovers herself. And we, we end with um, a reconnection to her sister. Um, she's making new music and more color is coming in and, and she's um, open to these ulterior worlds. Um, as you can see, which we did uh, in like a black void type scenario. And she takes on yeah, different wow. characters at the end. Um, so it really is the culmination of her journey. We had multiple Darrens in this shot. Um, so it's, it, you know, it's like her multiple versions of herself. But those were actual actresses. Um, and then we sort of finish with oh, I like that. Wow. this kind of world, which is maybe like we started here with her and we ended here. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah I just remember that can... yesterday, right? Yeah. Yeah, I really oh, like then... this. It's... Yeah. Sorry. You, when... I really like this when you feel the progression, you can see like, uh, yeah, maybe I will show you the next, the, the last, uh, all, the last um, act of uh, Le Mans too, to see from, from the start mm -hmm. and till the end, uh, what happened to this character and you're like, whoa, okay. And that's, we, we, we can enhance this with our looks. That's the purpose of it with the cinematography to, to, um, really uh, talk about the two, you know, it's storytelling also, colors are storytelling, framing are star storytelling. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and you, so you can enhance all this. You, this is a good example of it. I really like this shot. It's incredible. Oh, the lighting on that is beautiful. There's yeah. some Vaseline on there too, that made everything a bit glowy with the shoulder. Mm -hmm. You know, I had different filters with different layers of Vaseline, so some had more and some had less, so there was a way to, you know, take away from a face but add to a shoulder or so forth. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, the last thing I'll show you, because I want to just shout out to the, to the crew, because um, they're amazing, and um, let me see if there's a way I can share this picture uh, mm -hmm. oh yeah maybe i'll zoom in a bit can i lose that yeah oh i'm not doing the best job okay let's zoom out but um well maybe this isn't the best way to do it because the pictures are small yeah we can see that but, but can you see my arrow there? Yeah, this is kind of the, the core team, the, um, Lauren, yeah. Laurie producers. Um, and we have Wendy Morgan, um, the director, and Angela who helped us with um, stunts. And uh, I had Colin Acoon doing a lot of steady cam, a lot of movement, which you kind of see here. Oh no, that maybe wasn't the best. I tried to build some kind of like crew love thing and I didn't really <laughs> I could have done better there we go oh, 
but that's nice yeah nice to um when when you, you have like a, a good feeling and everybody's working together and and it's it's nice the teamwork is uh really uh yeah i'm looking for my word in english but anyway it feels good when you we're all going in the same direction and and it's get, getting even better and better yeah so how, how do we uh, end up this um oh yeah so, i was about to yeah. maybe yeah. quickly show maybe my last um because i i won't have time to show uh, other stuff, but maybe just uh, from, from you said, uh, whoops, I have a lot of, uh, oh, we, ha we need to maybe wrap this up. Yeah. Okay. I think they're telling us we have to um, announce a few things. Well, do you wanna, yeah. wait, we have, we have five minutes. Do you wanna share and then we do the finishing? Because there was something you wanted yeah. to show. You can say, uh, you can do all the, uh, the oh, talking. The and you. Oh, this is great. We're tagging it. Okay. Um, so our host next week, this is very exciting. We have uh, Technicolor colorist Mark Cooper with uh, DP Gavin Smith um, and deluxe colorist uh, Joanne Rourke with DP Jeremy Benning. And they will walk us through their tech set up for remote grading. Maybe they can send you all their gear so you can, <laughs> there we go. Um, okay, and then I, think, I thought I And then also I follow CSC, uh, well, I have one more thing to do, Claudine. Also follow CSC Live and CSC on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you, fans and everybody else. <laughs> it's gonna be like a confused uh, end. I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm going to do it quickly just to finish on that thing. This is the, the last act I was uh, asking myself about. Like um, when we did some tests, I wasn't sure how it will get along with all the other three acts. But um, now people can look at it on ec 2tv extra and let me know what they think about how <laughs> it is uh, all blending together those four looks and if you're able to follow if it was too much you can give me your and that you get <laughs> your opinion on <laughs> I, I would to love to it. have like, yeah, opinions on that and, and you know, it's it's part of the process also to, like I said at the beginning, to rethink your, what you've done before for the next project and and maybe redo things and, and do not uh, repeat others. So you can go check this on my website, clothesinsurvey.com and on yours. Uh, what is yours? Um, I have an admission though, I have almost finished a new website, but it hasn't transferred yet. So it will take you to Sessler, which is my agency. So, um, I should shout out to the Sessler team because they're, um, they're like my second family. They help me find projects and people to connect with and they take care of me. And um, I love all the guys over there. So thank you, Sessler. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Sessler. I would love to meet you. <laughs> there you go. Invitation, Sessler. Or the ooze there. I'm sure. <laughs> so glad I did that with you, Kristen. I would love to work with you too one day. I, I'm sure we will maybe, do. Yeah, like maybe we'll get to alternate sometime, although we still won't be together, or kind of. Yeah, yeah. And you have to come to Montreal to I eat famous cheese and the famous wine you have yeah. to taste i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna promote some quebec swine <laughs> pinard if you have to try you guys have the best food and the best wine so i'm gonna bring some pottery for you and then maybe there'll be uh, 
great. I'll have a, a tasting at home for you. Yes, of wine and cheese from Quebec. Yeah. <laughs> this is a weird way, but it's part, like we said, of the creative and artistic process, talking about other stuff, talking about life. This is important yeah. to remember. It's, it's, for me, it's really important. Get to know, like we said, our directors, what they like, what they don't like. And after, apply that to what we are sharing on sets. It's, it's, it's important. And so when, also during the weekends, when you can go meet them and it's not difficult. It's it, when you have to, we don't have enough time of prep, let's say, and you have to spend our weekend with them. It's fun. It could be fun too. <laughs> yeah. It's important. Well, let's hope and, but we sometimes, get back there sometimes. Sometimes it's not perfect. Huh? I said, let's, did you let's say? hope we get back to the process at some point. I'm, yes. I'm maybe a long way, so we'll see. I'm so lucky, like I said, that, I, you know, I've shot the bestsellers a few months ago and, and now it's, it, we will start grading in probably two weeks. So I'm so excited about it, <laughs> getting oh, back to work, but in a, a, a nice environment with my good friend, colorist Vicky Lenoir and Lina. Lina, she's in Toronto since a few months and she will come back to Montreal for that so yeah I can't wait to see her and uh, mm -hmm. and finish the final touch on that beautiful movie it's a really it was a I was lucky to get on that movie with Sir Michael Caine that is such a great actor and, and such a great gentleman too I sat in bed with him in Motel Oscar in Brassard, this cheap motel in oh, Quebec. Yeah. I sat in bed with him for many hours. Like I was holding the camera, it was such a tiny room and he, he was, that's okay, you can sit beside me. So I was in bed with Michael Caine. Oh, wow. One so day cool. I can roll that, my uh, diary. Dear diary, today I spent <laughs> today with, in bed with today Michael Caine. I was Kane. in bed with Michael Caine. You can't, not too many people can write that. I think you've got, <laughs> I once actually um, stood in on a Rush music video in a caravan and I was in bed with some of the Rush artists and it was um, ah. the highlight of my career when I was the second that I got to do. We have, we have an incredible it. job. <laughs> we do, don't this we? This is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, my dear. Well, I really um, just love hanging out with you so much. Thank you for for doing this. Let's do it again in person. Yeah. In person. Deal. <laughs>